is an exploding star, and the one that was found is 570 billion times brighter than the sun at its peak luminosity. Supernovas are one of the brightest and most violent explosions in the universe. They mark the end of a star's life, but they also lay the foundation for the birth of other stars. But how does a star go from being a burning ball of gas to exploding into oblivion? We've got all that covered in today's video where we take a quick look at supernovas. A supernova is the biggest explosion of a star. Like humans, stars have a life cycle, and all cycles come to an end. So when a star gets to the end of its life, it explodes in a huge burst of light and energy. According to NASA, supernovas are the largest explosions that take place in space. These explosions, even if for short periods of time, can outshine whole galaxies, and they can radiate even more energy than our sun. Heavy elements found in our universe are majorly displaced from supernovas. How do they happen? Stars are basically massive chemical reactors. They are a combination of gases burning up fuel to stay active and alive. But their fuel source isn't infinite and will eventually run out. The only difference between a star and a fire is that fire doesn't explode after running out of fuel. At the center of each star lies a core burning with large amounts of nuclear fuel, which produces high levels of energy that keep the star alive two opposite forces keep a star balanced. One of these forces is the gravity of the star, which tries to tighten and crush the star to the smallest size possible. The second force is the strong outward pressure created by the burning nuclear fuel within the star's core. This force resists and acts in opposition to the gravity keeping the star stable and balanced. These forces act to keep the star alive for billions of years. For instance, our sun has been burning for nearly 5 billion years and will continue to do so for another 5 billion years until it runs out of fuel in its core. When a star completely burns the nuclear fuel in its core, the internal pressure created from nuclear fission begins to drop. When this happens, there is no more counterforce to work against the gravity of the star, which causes the star to shrink over time. Eventually, the force of gravity becomes too great, causing the star to collapse in on itself. This is the final stage of a star's life and usually results in a very violent eruption. For context, imagine something a million times the size of Earth collapsing in less than 15 seconds. It happens so fast that the shock waves are powerful enough to explode the outer parts of the star. The explosion of that outer part of the star is what we call a supernova. Supernovae can release several solar masses worth of gas and energy at incredible speeds. The explosion pushes out an expanding shock wave into the surrounding interstellar region, sweeping up a shell of gas and dust known as the supernova remnant, the circle of life. You might be thinking that when stars go supernova, that's the end of the star's life, but that's not entirely accurate. When a supernova occurs, the explosion is so powerful that it breaks down and scatters the fundamental building blocks of the universe that form the core of most stars. This includes helium, hydrogen, and carbon. These elements float about as remnants of the dead star forming what is known as a nebula. Most new stars form from clumps of dense hot gas and dust within nebulas. Over millions of years, they spin and clump together until they form a dense, hot, gaseous ball that may result in another star. Most young stars we've observed around the Milky Way galaxy form from nebulas that were created after a supernova. So, in some way, supernovas are part of the circle of life in the universe. But not all supernovas result in nebulas. Some supernovas give way to something entirely different, black holes. Types of supernova. <laughs> when a star collapses under the weight of its own gravity, the core becomes extremely dense, such that a star weighing as much as the sun could shrink down to the size of Earth. When a star that is about eight solar masses reaches this stage, it is called a white dwarf. A white dwarf has the same mass as a star, but is much smaller and spins much faster. A white dwarf, the same size as Earth, is roughly 200,000 times more dense. Sometimes, if a white dwarf is dense enough, it creates a black hole when it goes supernova. Most black holes are a direct result of massive stars going supernova, leaving behind this void in space that nothing can escape. In the same way, supernovas can leave behind a black hole. They can also result in what is known as neutron stars. This type of supernova involves the explosion of a star, commonly in binary star systems. In a binary star system, the white dwarf's companion star is often a red giant. The stars may be close enough to each other, and the red giant large enough that material may flow from the red giant onto the white dwarf. 
This is because the white dwarf is more dense and spins much faster than the red giant, causing its gravitational pull to tug at its red giant neighbor. If the infalling matter being sucked from the companion star caused the white dwarf to approach a mass of one to three times that of the sun, the pressure at the star's core will exceed the threshold, causing the entire star to go supernova. What is left behind is a neutron star. Neutron stars are the densest objects in the known universe, measuring only about 12.5 miles across. These stars are so dense that a teaspoon of neutron star material weighs about one billion tons, which is about the weight of an average mountain. How often do supernovas happen? With billions of stars across an endless sea of galaxies in the cosmos, there is a high chance of a star going supernova somewhere right this minute. It's just a question of us being able to see it. Considering our galaxy is filled with planetary nebulas, as revealed by the James Webb Telescope, it's safe to say there have been a lot of supernovas in our galaxy. Supernovas are some of the brightest cosmic events humans have ever observed in the night sky, and are often seen all the way in other galaxies as well. But supernovas are difficult to see in our own Milky Way galaxy because dust blocks our view. The Oort cloud that surrounds our solar system doesn't do us any favors, but thanks to high-resolution telescopes like James Webb, we can peer through to get a better look at these star-forming regions Earliest Sightings of Supernovas One of the earliest sightings of a supernova was recorded in the year 185 AD, when a very luminous star in the sky took about eight months to dissipate. The astronomers recorded that the light didn't move like a comet and it lit up like a star. These characteristics are in line with the features of a supernova, which makes scientists believe that this event may have been the very first recorded and confirmed sighting of a supernova. SN 185, named after the year it was found, has also been confirmed by modern scientists as the remnants of the supernova called RCW 86 after an X-ray, and further studies show a match for the expected age. The Crab Nebula is also another remnant of a powerful supernova that was observed in the year 1054 AD and was visible for over 650 straight nights, latest supernova sightings. As human technology advanced, so did the venture of discovering supernovas. For the first time, it was announced that a supernova was captured on camera on May 21, 2008. Apparently, while looking at another galaxy 88 million light years from the Earth, a huge burst of X-rays was observed. Luckily, several other telescopes were able to get in on the action to be able to confirm and identify what we now know as SN 2008D. A Princeton scholar was able to confirm that the large burst of X-ray meant the formation of a supernova. 10-year-old Catherine Gray from Canada, alongside her father and a friend, found a staggering magnitude 17 supernova in a distant galaxy 240 million light years away. It was called SN 2010 LT. The feat makes Catherine the youngest person ever to find a supernova. The star Betelgeuse. Betelgeuse is one of the largest stars ever recorded, so large that if it were in our solar system, it would reach Jupiter. Astronomers believe Betelgeuse is about to go supernova and soon. This supernova would be so bright, it would outshine our moon in the night sky. But how true is this, and how will it affect us here on Earth? Now, the speculations of Betelgeuse's impending doom are not without cause. In early 2020, astronomers around the world observed that the star's light was particularly dimmed and wasn't as bright by approximately 60% of its original light. This caused a lot of speculation that maybe Betelgeuse had begun to reach the end of its life cycle. They called it the Great Dimming Event. Fortunately, that wasn't the case at all. Scientists have now deduced that Betelgeuse, a young and fiery star that is still evolving, simply lost a heavy hunk of its atmospheric gas that this later cooled, condensing to dust that ultimately blocked the sight of astronomers around Earth for months, which caused the illusion of a supernova event. Betelgeuse's light has long returned to normal since the spring of 2020, and the community of astronomers have long corrected and confirmed that Betelgeuse was, in fact, not blowing up anytime soon. In fact, it might not happen in a millennium or some 100,000 years. So thankfully, we won't have any supernova explosions in our galactic neighborhood for a while. Which is great, because if a supernova were to reach Earth, the effects would be catastrophic. 